Well, good evening, everyone. It's Monday night, and you know what that means. It's time for the Ryko Performance Monday Night Top Split here tonight, presented by Ryko Performance. I'm Taylor Burris. Alongside me is Nick Stein with our producer, Austin Darbyshire, as we are at the hallowed grounds of the paperclip itself. Martinsville Speedway to bring you tonight's action of the NASCAR A Open Series. As drivers are currently qualifying here tonight, it's going to be an exciting 110 laps racing action here at Martinsville, Virginia. Nick, a lot of drivers here utilize this track as a great way to prove your endurance, improve your driving capabilities on the short tracks, and also wreck avoidance is going to be another key factor here tonight. Yeah, wreck avoidance is always a big time key here at Martinsville. If you don't have good wreck avoidance, then good luck because Martinsville is known for its massive wrecks, you know, not to the levels of the big ones there at the super speedways, but I mean, there are definitely some track blockers that could happen here at Martinsville. I have seen it happen multiple times in races I've done and commentated. So yeah, just watch out for the wrecks because eventually there will be a track blocker tonight. Absolutely. As we take a look, thanks to Google Earth, at the beautiful half-mile oval here in Martinsville, Virginia. This track here has by far been one of the top premier short tracks on the NASCAR schedule since the 1950s, where this track has provided some of the most best of the best racing in the business, as we see here. And, of course, this track utilizes a lot of different aspects here. But, of course, the big thing is going to be hugging right against that bottom lane at all times on that concrete concrete is the biggest thing about martinsville here that's where all the grip is and if you get up into where that asphalt starts good luck trying to make the corner because as soon as you are putting any input into the wheel there is almost no grip on that asphalt whatsoever so if you get sent into the corner later in the race then uh yeah i i wish you luck but get the keys of the race tonight i mean first off it's it's martinsville uh save the rear tires you know you're constantly trying to get on the gas as hard as you can at turn two and turn four. And if you're not saving the rear tires, I, I, I feel sorry for you. And then of course, watch the wrecks in the corners. You know, it, it's very, very bunched up here, especially on the restarts. So if one thing goes wrong, two cars spinning can turn into 15 just as quickly as uh, anything you've ever seen. And of course, finally here tonight, you, got, you better get comfortable. It's Martinsville, 110 laps. There's going to be a lot of cautions tonight. Absolutely here, and as our, our viewers is saying, over or under on Yellow's 15. And before we make that decision here tonight, we're going to go ahead and make our picks for tonight's racing action. I'm going with the driver who's been on probably a bit of a hot streak in the NASCAR I Racing Series on Friday night. He's picked up three wins. Could he go for another one this Friday at Martinsville? It's going to be Sean Conklin as my pick in the number 54 Ryko Performance Ford Mustang. How about you, Nick? I'm about to take the number two of Nick. I mean, he he was on a hot streak earlier in the season, starting from the back and somehow managing to finish in the top three pretty much every week until, I believe, until it was at Coda. So hopefully he can continue that hot streak here at Martinsville. And I believe Darby's pick is also shot from the So three Ryko performance drivers, or two Ryko performance drivers picked out of the three of us here tonight. Of course, there is a couple of other big heavy hitters to keep an eye on. Of course, E NASCAR, Coca-Cola iRacing Series driver, Garrett Maines Racing. We also see Patrick Gitter in here, Joseph Gulata, a lot of the drivers that we see quite regularly on Mondays and Friday nights. Currently, weather outside, pretty nice and comfortable for a spring day at Martinsville. 73 degrees is the air temperature, 86 degrees is the track temperature. So we'll keep an eye on some of the action here as the drivers get themselves situated once again here. As we finish up, qualifying has come to a conclusion. It is time to give you your starting lineup for tonight's racing action here at Martinsville. Starting on the pole position with a 18.903 is the number nine of Cody Turlinde. On his outside is the 21 of Patrick Gitter in his 18 Conti, number 21. In row number two will be the driver of Garrett Maines in the 12 Ledford Brothers machine, followed by Matt DeCiani in the number four. Row three will be, of course, the number 20 of Joseph Joseph in his Ryko performance, Tommy Gossett Ford Mustang, with the 41 of James Houghton right there in sixth position. In seventh will be the 54 of Sean Conklin. Alongside him is going to be the 15 of Maverick Davis. 
Rounding out your top 10, of course, will be none other than Tyler Robertson in the 24 Gossip Machine, alongside Joseph Gulata, rounding out your top 10. Starting at 11th position tonight is going to be the 17th car of Jeremy Sumter with Joshua Watson in 12th position. Brandon Evans is going to be in 13th with Scott Healy in 14th position. And PB Henry rounding out your top 15. 16th place is going to be Miller Bonds with Sean Rogers in 17th position. Shane Davis in 18th with Brian Young in 19th. And Chris Davis rounding out your top 20. In the 21st position in row 11 will be Brazilian's Gabriel Marico, followed by Nicholas Broman in the number 95. Alongside him in that Cadillac Chevrolet will be Chubb Shockley, alongside him the 93 of Brandon Machesowicz. And then rounding out the rest of your field in 24 is Roger Pierce and Aaron Matthews, as the field will now line up and get themselves situated for 110 laps here tonight. Cody Terlande, I have, we haven't seen a whole lot of him racing in the Monday night top splits, and we'll see how well he does here tonight. Keep an eye on him as he is going to be one to watch as he will lead the field. And we saw last week at Richmond there, Nick, being in the front row with all the chaos that we saw on Friday night, it's a good safe place to be in order as long as you hit your marks on those restarts and starts. Yeah, Martinsville is fun. Being up front of Martinsville is always the safest bet. You know, I've had races where I started first position and I led every single lap purely because everyone couldn't stop wrecking behind. So being in that top five is probably the safest position to be on the track. And conversely, the most dangerous spot you could be is, you know, towards the back. I mean, that is the scariest place to be because you, you just it's all chaos from about fifth position on back and you know like i said earlier two cars spinning in turn three could turn into 15 in the blink of an eye so if you're anything further back then i would say third fourth fifth uh just you need to be on your toes for every single corner of this race tonight absolutely as fred the pace car driver will turn the lights off on the i racing pace car as we get set to go racing here at martinsville for the first time this week here on Grid Vision, as we have multiple races going to be happening here at the Paperclip throughout the week. Of course, on Monday night, Tuesday night, and then of course on Friday night for the Ryko Performance Friday night top split event for the NASCAR iRacing Series. Field now working their way into turn three and four. Fred makes the hard left turn down onto pit road. Barney the Flagman will have the green flag ready to go in hand as they enter into the restart zone. Keeping an eye on Trelande and Gitter, who will get the jump on the field as they enter the restart zone. Green flag is out as Trelande barrels down into turn one. Gitter, though, with a big head of steam on the outside. Mains follow suits in third as they come through the middle of turn one and two. Here's where you're going to see the advantage of the outside lane for a couple of laps. Gitter able to get a really good run off the corner, but just not able to keep up with the, how deep you can break going in onto that, onto that inside line. He will get clear of the 12 of Garrett Mains, though, but he does settle down in second position. And it, it's always, you always want to get to the bottom as quickly as you can here at Martinsville because if you're stuck on that top line, you are going to be back in a very good way. One of two home tracks for Garrett Mains, Virginia native, as he's looking to try to have a good run here tonight at Martinsville. But so far, we'll go a little further back to the battle for P4 right now between Joseph and DeCiani, who will go two by two at a turn number two. Houghton and Conklin, as Conklin will get the position over the driver of James Houghton as they work their way through the middle of the corner. Yeah, once again, seeing how difficult it is to run that outside line and just not able to make any ground up, especially at Martinsville in the next gen. But the way the package works, I mean, it's almost impossible to make any moves around the outside. and. It is just really, really difficult, especially at Martinsville. I mean, you, you, you can make moves around the outside and say like the Xfinity or maybe even the truck, but you, you get into the cup car and it's pretty much single file from about the first four or five laps on. Caution is out for the first time. Looking at the 17 of, or 52 machine of Jeremy Sumter, who went around in the TWRS Chevrolet. As we'll get a look at the replay to see what happened to him and Here's the replay. It looks like a little bit of contact, possibly, with the 39 machine. Tough break for him as he will go up the track, loop it around. No one else will make contact with him. So crisis averted, but still not the best start for this number machine of Jeremy Sumter. Yeah, that happens a lot more often than you would think, you know, just 
getting into the corner and not realizing you have a car to the inside and it's going a little half spin. I mean, that's probably one of the more common wrecks here at Martinsville. I mean, you see it right here. Just didn't realize he had the car below him, tried to go down to turn into the corner and just nice little uh, 90 degree spin there. It was uh, Brandon Evans who made contact with him in the number 39 Premier setup Chevrolet. So tough break for those two drivers. As we are under caution for the first time here tonight, 7 of 110 up on the board. But Trelande had a pretty decent run holding off Gitter and Mainz during those first few laps. And it's a little too early for pit stops to be happening right now. We should be seeing it probably around 55 to 60 laps is where these drivers will probably want to come down pit road for tires before this race is over with. Yeah, it's also all going to depend on how many green flag runs we get between now and that moment. If it's if it's going to be cautions pretty much all throughout towards that uh, time, you're looking at probably close to uh, 80 or 90 laps. I've, I've even seen people in just caution fest races here at Martinsville where they didn't pit at all. So it, it, it all depends on how clean everyone is willing to race each other. And if we do get some green flag runs, yeah, I would say probably around 60 or 70. But if it's going to be caution after caution after caution, then I, I, I would honestly go and say I wouldn't expect anyone to pit at all. It is a big issue right there, and we'll see how this plays out for the drivers here as we are still under caution. Looking through to see if anyone decided to come down pit road. So far, nobody, as it's safe to say, as a couple of drivers see if they're making some moves up through the field. Everyone's just kind of been single file for the most part and towards the front of the field except for we saw that issue that happened towards mid-pack around the 10th and 11th position before they sent a driver of Jeremy Sumter around in the 52. So we'll see how we have these drivers work up, get themselves situated for the little bit of the long haul. Like you said, get comfy. Don't need to cause too many incidents to where I have a shot of losing out on a good finish. Yeah, as I said, it's all going to be about position here tonight. And I think if Terlin, or uh, is it, Ter Terlind or Terlind? Uh, what, what was the pronunciation you said? Terlinde. Terlinde. Okay. Is it Terlinde or Terlind? I, I I've heard different. Uh, I've heard both be called about him. We'll have to make. Well, if he's in the top three or decides to come up for an interview, we'll double check with that as the lights are out on the pace car, and doubled up once again. It is Terlinde and Patrick Gitter on the front row as Terlinde decides to give Fred a little bit of a scare right there. As Garrett Mains gets right on the back bumper with his Ledford, Ledford Racing Brothers Racing Toyota Camry in there. Gets right up there and sees how this plays out. Into the restart zone they will go off turn number four. Marty Blackman has the green flag ready to go in hand as we are back racing. A great jump right there by Cody Villande as they take the run down into turn one and two. Side by side for second between Gitter and Mains as Mains tries to propel him to two as they come down the back straightaway. Playing the mental games there to win is as he gets a very early jump through the restart zone and oh here comes Garrett Mains he's gonna get a pretty good run off of turn number four and get up to the rear bumper of the 17 to Terlin maybe try to give him a little bit of bumper and try to get under him going down into three looks like that's the plan as he doesn't quite get the run he would like there but still wouldn't be surprised if there's a move made for the lead within the next couple of laps. Everyone trying to jockey around for position a little further back, but we are watching the battle for the race lead as Sean Conklin looked to the inside of Patrick Gitter for that third position. Conklin couldn't make the run work as he now has to back off about a car length separates the two, but Gary Maines just pushing on the back bumper of Terlinde as they come out of turn number four. He wants the lead here at Martinsville as he is trying to find the opening. He'll stay tucked up, but he will continuously just beat on that back bumper of that Ford Mustang as they work out of turn two. Garrett Maines looked at the inside for just a moment there, not able to make the move, still giving the bumper to the 17 to Terlin. And another little battle here. This is Gulotta making a move for position here. Looks like he will have the move going down into one, but a pretty deep send there as Baines makes the move to the inside of turn one, and that's going to be a caution as we have a car spun. Actually, no caution just yet. Trouble for Shane Davis as he gets looped around out of turn number four. He's got to hurry, though, because here comes the leaders once again as they work their way over into the corner. Uh, looks like he might have had a little bit of help as now the caution comes out once again. Was it Sumter again? 
Oh, uh oh. Sumter, another issue him in the 52 machine. Huh. As. I'm surprised he just didn't decide to pull it down pit road. I. I don't know what that would have been about. Oh, and that's why. No, this is why uh, Shane Davis spun. I don't think this was the reason of our caution. As we'll get it. Scott Healy, possibly by the looks of it, might be the reason for the caution. Right oh, there, yeah. contact. Now the case of making a late move into the corner and just another half spin. Like we saw with Sumter on lap number five there. Tough break indeed, as we do have one retirement of Scott Healy. So Field will work their way around here. 18 laps on the board. Garrett Maines was able to get the race lead away from Cody Terlinde for that race lead. Gitter still holds off Sean Conklin as Joseph Joseph will be your top five here tonight so far with this race. Nicholas Vroman, one of your biggest movers, started towards the tail end of the field in 22nd. He's now up to 15th, so definitely going to keep an eye on the Hard Rock and Casinos Tampa number 95 Ford Mustang. And you said you wanted to ask about this earlier. Now that we've gotten about 20 laps in this race what are you taking for cautions over under 15 well i'm gonna say just about under i'm i'm gonna take the over but not by much because it may seem like a clean race now with only two cautions through 20 laps but i've seen races be clean for the first half and, and then it's just nothing but cautions afterwards so I'm going to go ahead and say there's going to be 16 cautions. Excuse me, I'm going to say about 13. Like I said, that, that's a really good line there from uh, Jacob Schneider there. I, I wonder why he's not in this race. Well, we'll hopefully see him on Friday night as uh, Michael Peters gives a shout out to Maverick Davis in the number in ninth position, currently driving in the number 15 machine. Keep an eye on him as lights are out on the pace car. Mains and Terlande will lead them to the green flag as they work their way out of turn number two. 21 laps are on the board. We'll see how these drivers sort themselves out on this restart. The restarts haven't been that chaotic here, so we'll keep an eye on the drivers as Fred makes the hard left turn down onto pit road and then sprawl their way through turn three and four before they enter into the restart zone once again. Barney the Flagman has the green flag in hand. It's time to go back racing here at Martinsville. Mains gets a great jump on the field. So does Patrick Gitter. And they are able to easily get around pa oh, Cody Terlande for that second spot. Now Terlande stuck on the outside lane with trouble from Joseph Joseph in the 20 machine who will keep him on the top side along with Sean Conklin as they come out as the caution comes out once again. Trouble for Maverick Bonds and, or Maverick Davis and Miller Bonds. So we'll see how this happens here. Looks like a little bit of a checkup and then they just an absolute collision where multiple drivers get caught up in it. Field getting themselves situated here as we see there. Another look at the replay. Davis trying to not get into the back bumper of Deciani as he causes that, which causes him to lock up the brakes a little bit, collecting the 24 of Brian Young and several other drivers. So a tough break here for him, as he doesn't have significant damage to the nose of his Chevrolet. But unfortunately, uh, commentator's curse comes into play. So 
as the field now will line up behind the pace car. 24 laps are on the board, and the drivers will now situate themselves as we're under our third caution for the night. Nobody else really come down pit road as far as our front drivers, except for those who were involved in the previous incident here. As we'll keep an eye and set themselves up through turn one and turn two. Lights should be out next time by for your race leaders as we should be getting ready to go back green flag racing at the moment here pretty soon. So far as one driver will barely get off pit road before the pace car comes up. That of course being the driver of Tyler Robinson who will have to now let the field go by. That will put him one lap down in his number 24 Ryko Performance Gosset machine. Tough break for him to start the night off. As Garrett Maines will work his way to the start finish line to start another round of green flag racing once again. We are momentarily as the lights are out on the pace car and we get ourselves situated for another run to the finish here, hopefully. As we see a couple of drivers get themselves doubled up, ready to go racing. For those of you wondering, Nicholas Broman picked up three spots last time by. Now has picked a total of ten positions since the start of the race. Fred, the pace car driver, makes the hard left turn down onto pit road as they will now work their way through turn three and four into the restart zone. Barney the flag man has the green flag in hand, and we are back racing. A big shove right there from Joseph Jefferson to the back bumper of Garrett Maines as they make the run through the middle of turn one and two as Gitter is stuck on the outside lane trying to find his opening to get to the bottom. He might have to try to squeeze in between the two Ryko drivers, but here comes a big send by James Houghton. He'll go right up against the outside wall and lose multiple positions outside the top ten, three wide as they head off into turns one and two. way through. Everyone makes it through nice and cleanly. Mains are now starting to pull away from the competition just a little bit. Lap after lap. Joseph Joseph, though, will hold on to that second spot. Conklin third with Cody Terlande and Joseph Gulata now your top five as they work their way to turn number two down the back straightaway. Everyone just trying to find their dancing part. And they're still three wide further back as Watson's trying to force his way inside the top ten. Picking up side by side, two by two, as Caution is out once again for the fourth time. Troubles possibly for the 74 machine and the 79, as well as the five. So Aaron Matthew, Shane Davis, and Chris Davis might be involved in this incident here. you see the issue of the 79 machine once again so having a little bit of trouble but is able to gather it back up for Shane Davis looks like there may have been another incident in front of him as well absolutely here so fourth caution so far about 11 away before we hit the 15 mark with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll hopefully have more green flag racing action here live from the virtual Martinsville, Speed, Martinsville Speedway on Grid Vision.
Welcome back to Grid Vision's coverage of the Ryko Performance Monday Night Top Split live here at the Virtual Marshall Speedway. Green Flag is back out as Mains and Conklin start to try to pull away. Joseph Joseph will go to the outside lane, try to pull up a hard charging Joseph Gulata, who is able to now slide into the third position. As now it's a Ryko Performance 1, 2, 3. As Gulata's trying to find the opening to get the third spot, Terlande and Gitter will battle for the fifth spot. Field working their way through the middle of turn one and two. Getter trying to drag race Trelande down into turn three and four. Outside lane trying to get some rubber built up on the outside, but so far not going to work as Trelande will power through. Trouble further back. PB Henry loops it around out of turn four. Multiple cars involved in this one as Chris Davis involves. Keep Chubb Shockley involved. Several other drivers involved in this one. The 04 machine of Gabriel Marxericchio involved in this one. Heavy damage to his number 04 Chevrolet. And that's how quickly a wreck can turn from one car spinning on the top to four, five, even six cars right there. I mean, just look how quickly this wreck explodes here on the front straightaway. Absolutely, multiple cars involved. There you see the Legacy Academy driver of PB Henry looping it around and many more drivers as it was definitely a tough break for him to cause that incident as we will ride on board. Just goes a little too wide, revs the engine a little too much with some wheel spin, loops it around, and unfortunately will collect at least half, almost half a dozen race cars on this one. Yeah, not as big as some wrecks that you've seen at Martinsville, but I mean, still a pretty decently sized wreck, especially for how short this track can be. Absolutely, as several drivers will come down pit road, such as PB Henry, Chubb Shockley, Chris Davis, along with the driver of Gabriel Mauricio, Aaron Matthews, and Shane Davis. So they'll stay out, so at least three drivers coming down pit, four drivers coming down pit road this time by. Two drivers are out of the race, that being Sumter and Scott Healy. As we are under caution, number five, 41 laps on the board out of the 110. As the cars that are on pit road trying to beat the pace car out onto the track to stay on the lead lap, and so far they were able to do that. And one wave around car by the looks of it, that being the 20 machine of Tyler Robertson who should be getting the lap back after his unfortunate situation going a lap down. Yeah, and after that, I believe the only car that's going to be a lap down, or actually no, there's going to be no cars a lap down now, as the only other two cars that are a lap down are Scott Haley and Jeremy Sumter, who have been involved in earlier wrecks, and of course, Roger Pierce, who did not start tonight. Yeah, so 25 started tonight out of the 26. And we are now down to 23 cars left in this race as James Houghton definitely lost a ton of spots after going wide through the corner. He is now sitting 16th after that incident. So he's got a lot of work to do here in order to try to get back to where he was, which was inside the top 10. Yeah, that's always the problem with going a little bit wide here at Martinsville as you get up into the asphalt, like I said earlier, and you're going backwards in a hurry. I mean... Where was he sitting? He was sitting like fifth or sixth, and as you said earlier, now sitting in 16th position right now. So, and that, that also proves just how quick things can change, especially at a track like Martinsville. Absolutely, and these drivers now, especially towards the front of the field, they are in a good position where they feel comfortable. But the thing is that drivers in the back are just so ready to go up through the field here and wanting to make some runs but the problem is just so many mistakes could happen especially off corner exit like we just saw that previous caution so we'll see if these drivers settle down a little bit and see how this will all play out as the lights are out on the pace car garrett main sean conklin leads them down into the restart zone sean conklin one of the top prospects and premier drivers in the business to make it to the e nascar series here pretty soon and garrett mains one of the multi veterans in this race as he works his way up through the field and mains checks out once again the virginia native knows a thing or two about getting around here at martinsville but conklin and joseph will battle for the second spot as they go two by two down the back straightaway Gulata slides down to the bottom of the racetrack as Gitter and Terlande throw in, of course, Brandon Evans as well. He's worked his way up towards the top five. 
Joseph Galata with the popcorn seat here between Joseph Joseph and Sean Conklin. A little bit of contact between the two. Galata getting on, uh, on the bumper of the 20 of Joseph squared here. Getting down into the corner. That's going to give uh, Joseph a little bit of a run through the corner. Gets a little bit loose on the bottom there as Sean Conklin squeezing him for everything it's worth. And looks like for the moment, Sean Conklin's going to come out on top in this battle. There was some trouble further back off turn number two where Sean Rogers loops it around. No caution. We're going to keep it clean and green for the moment as we ride on board with Gulata. Now back on screen to watch Gulata try to find the opening around Joseph and Conklin as they head off into one. Here's the thing about Martinsville. I mean, you feel like you have enough space to make a real life move, but that is until you get to the breaking zone where that track just tightens up like it's nobody's business. And, you know, that's why we don't see a lot of three wide. And if we do see a little bit of three wide, as Joseph Square gets a little bit loose off the corner, off the bumper of Sean Conklin, and now Galata making an attack move here on the 20 year. Coming off the turn number two, Galata gets a decent run off the corner, but Joseph Joseph's still going to have him into the corner. A lot of though doing everything he can to get it around the outside here and coming off a of four looks like uh, Joseph is going to win this battle. The battle of the Josephs here tonight at Martinsville between Gulata and Joseph as they come out of turn number two. Joseph does clear him off of turn number two. Gulata tries to power back through but here comes Trelande and Patrick Gitter with a big head of steam off turn number four. And Gitter will slide back into the sixth spot. Evans watches on with Watson as trouble for one driver. Was that Miller Bonds having some problems? Yes, it is. Miller Bonds getting loose off of the corner there, losing a few spots and just adding insult to injury on what has already been a rough race for that 12 camp. He has to back up and continues racing, but the problem is he now sits in 16th position. He's got a little bit of work to do as more drivers try to jockey around for position. There you see the number 74 machine in the Martin Sports colors of Chris Davis. Gazers it on. He's got some significant damage after being involved in the previous caution with PB Henry in the Legacy Academy Chevrolet. Once again, going back up front. 12 though Garrett Mains has pulled about says what two or three tenths over the 54 of Conklin which honestly at Martinsville is a pretty big lead and see further back to Joseph squared looks about a second or so between Joseph Joseph and uh, Garrett Mains there and how about this John Nicholas Broman moving up to P9 after getting around Matt DeCiani and now he sets his sights on his Ryko teammate of Joshua Watson then Brandon Evans, so he is slowly but surely making his way up towards the front of the field as they come out of turn number two. DeCiani trying to stay right on the back bumper in the Team Conti Chevrolet as they dive it down into the corner through the middle of three and four of Roman being patient, not wanting to push the envelope and just trying to bide his time to find his opening to make the pass for the position. Oh, a little bit of a lockup from the 0-1 of Joshua Watson there and Right here, this is the point of the race where we're really going to see who saved their tires and who was a little bit too heavy on them throughout the start of this run. This is where we're going to see cars starting to get tight through the corner, starting to lose a little bit of time throughout the mid part of the corner. And this is where we're really going to see those guys who saved their tires start to come through the field a little bit. You know, those guys that kind of just chilling, you know, the, the fifth, sixth, maybe sixth or seventh spot and are kind of just riding around just trying to survive basically and now this is the time where they're going to start to go and we're starting to see it already with Joshua Watson who's trying to make a move on Brandon Everts here but not able to get the run off the corner that he needs to get to the inside of the 39. Yeah he, he's got a good run but the problem is he can't get that opening yet as Watson now will try the outside lane around Brandon Evans but not able to do so. He saw that he had enough room on Broman to try to see if that would work but he's got to be careful now as he goes back up to the top side. Roman just being patient and watching on in the catbird seat. As they rock it off down the back straightaway, heading into turn three and four. Watson seems to be trying to get a good run. He's getting a little closer as he moves oh. down, collects Roman and Deciani. As we are under our sixth caution of the night. Oh, you could have seen that coming with him trying to make the move there. Trying to get that run off the corner. You just knew as soon as he went up to try and diamond the corner there that he was going to get on the gas too hard and loop it. And unfortunately, collecting the 95 of Roman off the corner. Yeah, right there. He got back on the gas. The car looped it around. And unfortunately for Roman, gets 
collected up in it, just being an innocent bystander. Same thing with Deciani. Doesn't like too much significant damage. A little bit of damage to the nose of both Ford Mustangs. Thankfully, aerodynamics is not critical when it comes to racing here at Martinsville. It may not be as critical at other tracks, but you still definitely do need some downforce here at Martinsville. But I don't think that there's too much damage for either Watson or Roman, but it'll still be a little bit noticeable, I think. As they work their way down into pit road, Brandon Machesowix and Chubb Shockley and Brian Young will come down pit road. As they work their way through, Garrett Maines will stay out on the track once again, feeling pretty confident with his tires for the moment. Keeping an eye on the field right now of who decided to stay out on the track. It pretty much drivers 18th on back came down pit road as the 74 machine will rejoin the track of Chris Davis along with Joshua Watson. Stay on the lead lap and not go a lap down as we are under our sixth caution of the night. Definitely inching closer to that 15 number, but the way this race is moving on right along, I don't think we're going to hit the over, which this is why I don't sports bet people because I suck. <laughs> well, so far... By the looks of our, from our timing and scoring, if everyone is able to play nice, keep it clean and green, we can end this race in about 15 minutes. Yeah, that all sounds nice, but there's also the, the fact that nobody wants to finish where they are right now except Garrett Maines. So <laughs> exactly. you and I both know there's going to be at least one more caution in this race. Yeah, there is. As a couple of more cars come back down pit road in order to repair some of their damages from previous incidents. As we're seeing if anyone else decided to retire. So far, no. Only two drivers have retired from tonight's race. That being Healy and Sumter. As Chubb Shockley and PB Henry still make some more repairs to their machines out on the track. As they are still on the lead lap, surprisingly. And just as I say that, PB Henry is probably going to go a lap down as we are doubled back up. Ready to go back green flag racing here. Mains, Conklin, Joseph, Gulata, Terlande, and Gitter, Evans, Deciani, Davis, and Robertson were top ten. Fred makes the hard left turn down to the pit road, and they will double up, ready to go green flag racing once again. As Garrett Maines will lead them on board with Joseph as he comes out of the turn number four into the restart zone. Great jump, big check uh -oh. right there. Big trouble right here. This opens the door for Joseph as Terlande uh -oh, makes that's a big wreck. And get her involved. Big issues right here on this restart, and something we needed to talk about as well is the restarts. People trying to play a little bit of different strategies on how they want to jump the field in order to get ahead of the competition, and this happens as... Is that possibly some technical issues where two cars got locked together? No, that was Conklin trying to jump the start, realizing that Mains wasn't going to go as soon as he thought, and just checking up really hard to not get the black flag for passing under yellow and I just oh yeah because it looks like everyone saw Conklin go and immediately thought that Garrett Maines had went as well and just kind of set off a huge chain reaction there certainly did and some significant damage to both Conklin Maines Gitter and Terlande as we'll ride on board with Conklin right there you see he's already starting to pull away Maines hasn't even gone yet as Garrett was able to get away with some, not too much damage, but for Conklin, that's going to be a little difficult to see how much damage he received to his number 54. Definitely that 54 has a good amount of suspension damage there. 
so does pretty much everyone else involved with that wreck because Garrett Maines hit that wall pretty hard. He's got a dented up, banged up right front. The left front looks okay, but he definitely banged up that right front pretty good. Conklin had uh, definitely some toe link damage there on that 54. And, you know, I think Patrick Kidder maybe has some splitter damage as well. And I think maybe Cody Talinde has some as well because there's a lot of cars that hit the wall there. There you see the damage right there on Garrett Maines' is left court brother racing Toyota. And Terlande, see how much damage he received. Not on the right side. See a little bit of splitter damage there. Yep, right there. You see a little bit of the nose caved in. So we'll see how this plays out for them as... Lights are still on the pace car. Seventh caution of the night. 70 laps on the board. And we got a whole new uh, cast and crew up towards the front of the field. Joseph Joseph, who has been inside the top five for a few few minutes, has worked his way to the race lead. Gulata now sits second. Brandon Evans, Cody Terlande, and Maverick Davis. Remember, early on, he was looped around having trouble. Now he's back into the top five once again as lights go out on the pace car we get set to go back green flag racing what are the odds that something like that happens again maybe galata trying to get a good run here maybe has a little bit of a mistake but i don't see that happening again i think people have learned now that you really can't jump the start here at martinsville no you you, you can't pull a, a denny hamlin on that outside lane i have to say okay <laughs> work their way through the middle of turn three and four they will enter into the restart zone right here and joseph gets a good jump gulata wait patiently as mains now goes on the attack to the back bumper of brandon evans to see if he can get back to the race lead here once again side by side with terlande and more chaos pursuits further back trying to another caution Oh, PB Henry. Looks like another half spin after some light contact through turns one and two for the 22. Oh, was this a solo spin? This could have been a solo spin. Oh, no, there was a big check up there. Oh, no, there was incident in front of him. Interesting that it did bring out the Kosh. Well, when PB Henry decides to completely back up onto the racing groove, then that would have brought the caution out. Looks like this was around the Shane Davis area. It looks like a little checkup here. And oh, yeah, just another little bit of contact after a checkup and sent a couple cars spinning there. Massey Juski having some troubles there. We were right on board with Brandon Massachusetts. As you see right there, Chubb Shockley gets into the back bumper, loops him around, and he was able to save it, but for PB Henry, he was not able to. Didn't make any contact, though, with anybody else, so give him credit there. Looks like for the most part, everyone got through that semi cleanly, as you mentioned, so that's always the funny thing about Martinsville no matter how big the wreck it always seems like not many people decide to retire from races like this I've had NIS races where there have been upwards of 30 cautions yet there's still 25 cars on the track after you know 220 laps and then you're just sitting here like how well for one driver who's trying to hope for the best but I think his night is done it's the number 95 of Nicholas Broman he's on pit road still he's been there for the past seven laps so safe to say his chances of a win here tonight are done not a good points night for him he's gonna have to definitely try again later on in the week in the NIS A Open races to get some valuable points for his run in the A Open Championship of course, the one he's really focused on is, of course, the NIS, as well as the eNASCAR qualifying series happening right now This for the next few weeks, as we should be getting the one-to-go signal this time by for Joseph Squared. And we yeah, 
an engine on that in on that lap 100 mark and you know i kind of predicted it earlier i mean race started off kind of clean only two cautions in the first 20 laps and it seems like or at least it feels like it's been pretty much caution after caution after caution since it, it certainly has as we watch on and see how this will play out for the remainder of this race as fred the pace car driver makes the hard left turn down onto pit road both the Josephs. Let's see if they can get a little bit of a better start on this situation. Into the restart zone they will go, and green flag is out. Gulata gets a little bit of a bump right there from Mains as they make the run into turn one. But for Joseph Joseph, he has a plenty of room to be able to manage the gap. As Brandon Evans moves up to P2 side by side. Garrett Mains will push on the back bumper of Evans through the middle of turn three and four to make. Oh. Glenn locks up, almost get to the 54 Conklin. Absolutely great racing action. As trouble further back as Chubb, Shockley, James Houghton, and many more involved in another one here. Oh. Yeah. Trouble for Chubbs as he loops it around on the back straight or the front straightaway here. And then Houghton collects, of course, Massey and Shane Davis. This is further up. And just looks like they looks like Houghton wanted to make a move there and just wasn't able to get low enough and made a little bit of contact and let's just keep watching here because he just it's like, yeah, oh, you cut off, I was going to say, ah. Oh. And now he's just sending it down pit road. I don't think that 41's too happy right now. Get another look because just felt like we needed another angle, but like I said, just got into the 04 there, and you could just see right about here when he just tries to take off, he just gets kind of hot-headed here and just said, you know what? I'm done. Back to the middle wall. Tough break right there for James Houghton, who's one of the main contenders in both Friday and Monday night competition. See him towards mid-pack to top five possible runs here, so we'll see if he's able to maybe find his way up through the field once again for the second part of our Monday night broadcast. Once again, of course, heading over to the B Open cars where they will also race here at the Martinsville Speedway. Yeah, another one of those rare weeks, or not rare weeks, but it, all three series being at the same track here, so. We'll see how this works out for our drivers between the two Josephs. Will Brandon Evans have something to say to see if he can maybe work his way into a chance of a win? Or will Garrett Maines get back on the throttle once again to get back where he started up towards the front of the field, leading laps and having a chance to win once again here at his home track? E3 laps on the board. A lot could happen still for our drivers as we're just about... 30 laps left to go in the race. So are you sticking with your pick of Conklin or? Well, he's still sitting in the fifth position right now. And uh, unfortunately for you, unfortunately for you, Nick, right there, your pick is out of the race. Yeah, unfortunately. It's everyone I pick always just does not have a good race. It's, it's kind of bad. he's not out of the race per se but he is for lack of a better word out of the race yeah he, he is looking to be at least maybe have a shot of a top 20 if some more incidents were to happen where more drivers get taken up but so far nobody really has decided to exit the race so far as fred makes the hard left turn down to the pit road Marty the Flagman will be ready to go, watching over the two Josephs as Brandon Evans and Garrett Maines watch in row two. Conklin, Terlande, DeCiani, Gitter, Bonds, and Davis. Green flag is back out as they make the hard charge over to turn one. Joseph gets a great run down into turn one. 
Gulata stays up towards the top side as Maine's trying to find the opening, but here comes Evans and Conklin as they drag race down the back stretch. Brandon Evans, Sean Conklin side by side now as Conklin gets to the inside of Terlinda there. And it looks like he'll have the move complete on the 17 machine. Of course, that 17 based off of Chris Busher's paint scheme and still going here between Conklin and Terlinda, but it looks like Conklin's going to be clear for the first time here off of turn number two. And DC on is sitting here in the popcorn seat, just watching this go on. Terlinda, though, locks up there in turns three and four and now allows Matt Deciani, who's going to spin off of turn four. And that is a huge wreck. Comes back up into traffic. The 0-4 involved. Josh Watson, James Houghton involved as well. Masajewski involved. Also, PB Henry gets through. But for Deciani, yeah, I got to say, that, that, that car is... Is done as James Houghton is voicing his displeasure regarding that incident. As Deciani makes its contact with Terlande and unfortunately will go right up in front of the field, collecting the 04 machine also of the driver. Who was that driver? Gabriel Madric Madricchio. As Sean Rogers takes it behind the wall, his night is done. And unfortunately, a tough break for several drivers, especially for James Houghton. He is going to definitely be looking forward to getting out of the short track runs that we've been having here this past couple of weeks. Yeah, it's always the, one of the worst times of the year is this short track, just kind of a gauntlet, basically. I mean, you, you, you had Coda, which always kind of just, it's, it's a road course, and then two straight short tracks, and I believe they go to Talladega after this, if I'm not mistaken, so... Just kind of the gauntlet to start the season here. Yeah, absolutely, and this is going to be interesting to see how this will play out for these drivers now. I think it's safe to say no one is coming down pit road to change tires or add fuel if you're in the top 10. If you're outside the top 10, we could see some drivers do that, but still a tough call to play out for our competitors here as we are now at 20 laps left to go, in, or actually, Yep, right around 20 laps to go. Yeah, actually, you are, you are dead right. Coming up exactly on 20 to go. So we'll see who is going to continue on their way through as Gulata and Joseph... Mains, Evans, Conklin, still all looking to try to get a win here tonight. Take a look at a couple of things here for the... We do apologize for the situation that just happened. Our, we had some technical difficulties, but we can give you a quick rundown of how this all played out. Joseph Joseph was able to hold off a hard-charging Garrett Mains as Mains tried to drag race him out of turn number four as they banged doors and went side-by-side. Side. We do, once again do apologize for the situation that happened. Sometimes, unfortunately, technology decides to not play by the rules, but we'll give you a quick rundown of your finishing order, it was Joseph Joseph winning the race over Garrett Mains. Joseph Gulata comes home in third. Sean Conklin fourth with Cody Terlande in fifth. 
Brandon Evans in sixth with Patrick Gitter seventh, Maverick Davis, Miller Bonds, Tyler Robertson round out your top ten. PB Henry will be in eleventh with Chris Davis in twelfth, Aaron Matthews, Gabriel Matarico, and Brandon Matajewski in fifteenth. James Houghton, 16th, Shane Davis, 17th, Matt DeCiani, Brian Young, and Joshua Watson round out your top 20. Chubb Shockley, Sean Rogers, Nicholas Broman, Scott Healy, Jeremy Sumter, and Roger Pierce round out your field. We will be back momentarily to bring you the Ryko Performance Monday Night Top Split of the B Open race here in a few moments' time. We once again thank you and apologize for the situation that just happened. We hopefully will have you more great, exciting action for the B cars at Martinsville in a few moments' time. Well, we welcome you all back as we are still in a little bit of a holding pattern for our next race for the NASCAR iRacing Class B race at Martinsville. But it gives us a moment to talk to our race winner in an exciting fashion. Joseph comes in with a great finish side-by-side -side with Garrett Maines. Joseph, I gotta say first and foremost, you pulled off a stellar drive to work your way up to the field, pulled off some strategy and still managed to hold off a hard-charging Garrett Maines. Walk us through that. 
Yeah, I feel like I got kind of lucky on the one restart to get to lead. There was a like mega stack there, and I luckily didn't get a black flag, and I cycled to the lead after like Garrett and Sean got some damage. And once I got the lead, it was it was um nerve wracking, you know, trying to time the starts, get a big jump, and just control the race. Uh, when Garrett got up to me at the end there, I was um scared to um block him on the bottom because I know he's um slightly faster so i was just trying to roll up top and pinch him down as much as possible to hold him off well i mean you were able to do that and do a great drive indeed and that definitely is a much valuable point tonight for you as well i mean anyone you want to give a thank you to for this win because i'm just it was an absolute exciting finish we have once again wish we had this coverage to show that tail end of the race but due to some issues unfortunately we weren't but still a great drive for you tonight joseph yeah, shout out to Ken, you know, builds the setups all the time. Everyone on the team builds such fast setups. Um, shout out to Garrett, you know, he raced me clean there at the end. And he didn't have to, he could like move me up the track or wreck me. But he raced me clean to the end. And shout out you guys in the booth, you know, um, putting this on. This is really cool. I like, I like going back and watching the race after. So, thank you. Of course, and that is, of course, Mr. Joseph Joseph coming home as your race winner here tonight. And we will now move on to our second place finisher. He comes home a second in a drag race to the finish. Oh, as he stepped away again. We had him, we promise. We had, we had Garrett Mains ready to go. So we will take another quick commercial break and hopefully have Garrett Mains come back with us when we return for the Be Open race in a few moments.
Welcome here for a second race of our Monday Night Top Split Edition presented by Ryko Performance. And joining me here is, of course, our producer, but he'll also get behind the mic a little bit here tonight. Austin Derbyshire joins myself, Taylor Burris, as we get ready to bring the exciting action for the B Open Series under the lights here at Martinsville Speedway. And it's going to be an exciting one here for us tonight. We already got a good look at the track already earlier on during the A open race, but Austin, this Martinsville Speedway is gonna be one that's gonna be full of excitement. What are some of those extra keys to victory that we talked about in A open? Give a little refresher for those tuning in for the B open race. Well, I decided to change up the keys to the race a little bit, but first off, wheel spin. Not gonna be too big of a deal, but these B cars, they definitely have a lot of power going to the wheels, so you definitely gotta watch how you take off. We see a lot, seen a lot of cars bumping into each other on the restarts in, cla in class A there. And expects the more tonight and B. Number two, stick to the inside. You definitely want to get to the inside and have that shorter distance around the track. And uh, third, just like last race, get comfy. Uh, we're about to see a numerous amount of cautious tonight and uh, you're gonna need to be comfy in your gaming chair or in your rig, whatever you're racing out of. Of course, last race we were just shy of 10 cautions that happened during the A open race. So, for those of you who are in the mix of over unders, could we see over 15 cautions or under 15 cautions? That is going to be the big question for a lot of our competitors here tonight as qualifying still underway for our drivers here tonight. Quentin Warman is still working his way through and just completed his lap time as a few other drivers are working their way around the circuit. Let's go ahead and give our picks for tonight. Quentin Warman in that number 84 Ryko performance has been one of the top drivers when it comes to the B Open series. He's going to be my pick. And Austin, we get to actually say live who your pick is going to be for tonight. Well, who would have thunk it? I'm taking Garrett Means. Uh, you know, very competitive pro driver. I expect him to uh, walk away handily with this race. And you know what? I, I thought about making a second pick because I'm doing do two jobs, but I'll just make one tonight. <laughs> well, we would have given you the second pick anyway, but you know what? We'll save that pick for our viewers here tonight. So if you have someone you are pulling for in tonight's race, make sure to shout it out in the comments section, and we'll be sure to let those viewers know who you are pulling for during tonight's B Open race. Temperature right now, it's looking at a nice, comfortable 70 degrees. 72 degrees is the track temperature, but as the race progresses further and further into the night, well, that track temperature might get a little bit cooler as by the end of the race, you're looking at temperatures just under 70 degrees at least for our drivers here racing tonight. Yeah, don't, not expecting a whole lot of uh, temperature fluctuation, maybe a couple degrees on track uh, when, once the cars start going around, but uh, there shouldn't be anything too great. Tonight. And of course, one good thing also, Austin, no rain, and we do not expect to be seeing these NASCAR Xfinity cars be utilizing the rain tires like we saw at Richmond last this past week with the cup cars on Sunday night. I, I got to say, though, yeah, that was a good race last night, especially for Richmond. I think uh, as, as good of a product as we could have expected from the short track practice. Probably the best short track race we've seen since the dawn of the next gen. I have to agree. I know a lot of people were giving some grief regarding it, but overall, it was some good strategy, some good racing. I mean, the wet weather tires really came in handy, and I hope down the road we'll see some other situations like that for short tracks, such as here at Martinsville, Richmond, or North Wilkesboro. But of course, we'll have to wait and see how this all plays out as qualifying is about 30 seconds away. We have about four to five cars yet to qualify. That being Ryan Hart, Matt Bell, Hunter Lagoons, and Michael Whitaker, who have yet to set time in tonight's race as Mr. Warhoss is saying let's go to Quentin Warman who is one of your front runners in the championship for the NASCAR B Open Series so he is definitely gonna be one to watch of course last time I called a Monday night top split event uh, he was the winner at Atlanta Motor Speedway a few weeks ago so we'll definitely keep an eye on him as sunset is now happening here at Martinsville Speedway and it is time to give you your starting lineup for tonight's racing action here at Martinsville for race two of the night 
As drivers line up, it's going to be a front row of Ryko Performance drivers of Garrett Mains and Quentin Warman as Warman gets the pole with an 18797. In row number two, we'll find Chad Sullivan with Aaron Clemens in his th fourth position. And rounding out your top five is Robert Warrens. He'll start alongside Tyler Justice in the sixth position. Row four, we'll see Dustin Tanks in the 21 Dirtfish Rally School machine. Alongside him will be John Williams in the Team Conti machine. Rounding out your top ten, another favorite when it comes to B Open Racing, Mike Bruno. He'll start alongside Andrew Jones. In 11th position, we'll find Dylan Murcott alongside Richard Allen in 12th position. Josh Gein and Eddie Rose will be in row 7. In row number 8 will be Nick Morton alongside the number 23 machine of Jared Mor Moga Morgard. Alongside in 17th and 18th will be Danny Hansen and Adam Wright. In row number 10, it's going to be Patrick Leroy in the 22 and Weston Ward in the 13th. Row 11 will be Michael Lancaster and or Mitchell Lancaster and Hunter Legumes as well in the 22nd position. In row number 12, it'll be Ryan Hart and Matt Bell. And finally, riding shotgun, Michael Whitaker in the 24. A lot of heavy hitters in tonight's race. We see, of course, the Ryko Performance at the front of the field. Then you have the Reaper Speed Lab driver and the Raging Cajun machine of Chad Sullivan. A little further back, you have Rapid Speed Shop. Elliot Sadler Esports of the driver of Robert Warren's in the 95 machine. And then you have the Team Conti driver. You have a lot of different drivers. Race EPI. Dirt Fish Rally School number 11 of Dylan Murcott and so many other drivers to keep an eye on as Fred, the pace car driver, will pull away and lead these drivers around for two pace laps here in Martinsville. Fred, the pace car driver. Fred, Fred, Fred. He's going to get a lot of laps in tonight. Hashtag bring back Benny is what I have to say regarding that matter. But anywho, I digress. So we saw in race one, we had a couple of good green flag runs at certain points of the race, especially towards the end of the race where they pretty much went about 30 laps without any incidents. Could we possibly see that here tonight with the B Open? I sure, I sure don't hope so. I would, uh, <laughs> uh, I want to see just green the, the whole way. Uh, no, I, I no, agree, no, no, uh, short distances, anything like that. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a green flag pit stop at Martinsville in uh, almost two years of uh, producing racing. Uh, let's, let's change that tonight. Well, we can certainly do so. And, of course, for these drivers, we want they if they have both, not a whole lot of cautions here tonight, we definitely will see some pit stop strategy towards the front of the field. In the A open race, we didn't see a single driver make a pit stop and close towards the front of the field. But... Fred, the pace car driver, makes the hard left turn down on the pit road. Barney the Flagman will have the Ryko Performance green flag in hand as they enter into the restart zone. And they are off, but Garrett Gage start a little bit right there. That's going to be a question to see how that plays out. But it's Warman and Mains battling side by side as they come off of turn number two. There you see the 21 machine trying to get up into third. That is Chad Sullivan as he will get around in his Ford Mustang. Right there behind is the Robert Ward with the Elliott Sadler Esports machine trying to find his opening around Aaron Clements. Yeah, you see them all trying, trying to stay single line. Great job at, at that as they all come in with slightly separate attack angles. But uh, right now, Chad, Chad Sullivan and Aaron uh, Clements battling. Sullivan trying to hold strong as the first caution is out further back. It's a pile up off turn number four as the driver of Michael Whitaker, Hunter Lagoons, Ryan Hart, Matt Bell, and several others have some trouble off turn four. Right, we're going to hop in the grid vision chopper here and take a look at uh, Ryan Hart, who was uh, the first driver uh, to come across the telemetry via the crash. Oh, tough break right there. He loops around, gets corrected back, but unfortunately for everyone else, uh, they get collected in this incident. So a tough break for Ryan Hart in that BetMGM Toyota Camry. It definitely never looked good. That's for sure. 
It, it certainly didn't like, look like much, but unfortunately, just the stack up, that accordion effect, is what caused all of this extra chaos because, as we saw right there, Hart was able to help the driver get back going once again. But unfortunately, with that accordion effect, of course, it just it caused everyone else to get stacked up, turned around, and Mitchell Lancaster was the only one really able to get away without too much damage. Uh, five laps down of 140 laps. Uh, one caution. Uh, is he over under 15, or, do, or is it a higher over under now? I think we were going to keep it still at 15, because we didn't hit 15 in race one. We were at six or seven, so I think we might be okay. So I think 15 is still a decent number to hit the mark at over or under. Well, I'll make the bet at under. We know that it ain't those odds being given us by Bet at Bet MGM, as uh, that was the car that was turning around in the back there. But uh, uh, maybe, maybe we'll go place a bet somewhere else. Let's <laughs> see what happens here tonight. Uh, the question is going to be: Could it be a Ryko sweep once again? That could be another bet you can place for tonight's race. Of course, we don't have any esports gambling going on, but if there were, that would be a one interesting one to place. Well, one of the things that we wanted to do with Grid Vision was actually, the uh, ri original plan was to be on Twitch only and have replays on YouTube. And if we were on Twitch, we could actually have betting on the races via Twitch chat and have like the channel points or something like that. Oh, who knows? Maybe one day we can get that situated and figure out it. But the lights are out on the pace car as the two Ryko drivers will get themselves sorted out. Mains was able to get a good jump, so he will now start on the bottom of the racetrack into the number one Ford Mustang alongside Quinton Gorman in that second spot in the number 84. Then you have a Reaper Speed Lab driver of Chad Sullivan. And then, of course, the 67 Rapid Machine right beside him of Aaron Clements as they come out of turn number four. The MCU body machine will lead the charge into the restart zone. Green flag is out and Maine shot out of a cannon. Gets away with a race lead by multiple car lanes as they head off into one. Here comes, though, the driver of Chad Sullivan to the inside of Warman. Side by side, Warman is able to gather it back up and continue on as Sullivan drops down to third. Oh, Tyler Justice there, getting a little bit squiggly out of the turn there, but uh, able to get back back underneath him and uh, just actually make the fight on the outside. Oh, a little of wall contact there as well. A little bit of wall contact. They gather it back up, but no harm, no foul. They'll keep racing here as they come through the middle of turn number three and four. And Sullivan will hold on to the fourth spot. Trouble, though, further back. The 25 machine gets turned around of Adam Wright. A couple of others get some damage. Yeah, it looks like uh, the action started there right around Aaron Jones. As you see, uh, his rear clip is uh, gone. It certainly is. So a tough break for Aaron Jones. As we get another look at the replay, there's 3Y. That's something you don't want to do. And it looks like the 11 machine goes up the track. And then there's the contact right around for the one of Aaron Jones. Take another look here from the Grid Vision Shopper at Hunter at uh, his damage that he got in this race. Here, we just run here. Well, the 27 almost gets through it before getting contact from the back bumper. Yeah, unfortunate. Two cautions, and uh, he's been involved in both of them. Yeah, it's a break for the RRG machine Toyota. As several drivers will come down pit road this time to get some damage repair done for them. Yep, led by Andrew Jones there, who was involved in that wreck. As we see Eddie Rose, Michael Lancaster, Weston Ward, Hunter, and uh, Michael Whitaker also on pit road. Yeah, tough break for those as the drivers will work their way. That could easily put some of them a lap down before it's all said and done. The 27 machine, though. He will quickly go on to the track. That is Hunter Lagunes in the Raptor Race Graphics Toyota. As he does not want to go a lap down along with several other drivers. Andrew Jones, though, he's going to stay in pit road. He's going to go one lap down here right now at the moment. But now the pace is going, he could get back on the lead lap very quickly. 
Yeah, he just uh, needs to get back on track before going two down and hope there's caution right away. Otherwise, uh, if the, this goes, does go uh, to a long run format, there's a very good chance that uh, someone on track will end up being the lucky dog. We've lost Taylor uh, right as of right now, so um, Gary Baines uh, taking the start there. Quinter Warman and Chad Sullivan falling right behind him, fighting for P2 here. And it looks like Warman is going to be able to inch just in front of him. Oh, no. It's, uh, Sullivan able to keep his nose right on the corner of the panel. Oh, and there goes Justice. Big. Oh, goodness. That's a big pile up right here. As tempers flaring from the 14 machine. Glad to have you back, Taylor. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's been a little issue with the connection. So we're back at it once again as we're now under caution. But let's take a look at the six machine. Right there's the contact. He comes off, loops it around. Same thing with the tire spin, and then collects several drivers who just send it in. Oh, who is that in the DuPont paint? That was a blow motor. That is definitely a blown motor indeed. I believe that is the 23 of Nick Morton. But tough break for Tyler Justice as well, as he will go a lap down along with Michael Whitaker. Andrew Jones still gets on the racetrack. Weston Moore, though, has got some significant damage to his number 13. On board with Morton. Yeah, right here you'll see Morton trying to see if he can avoid it, but unfortunately... I don't know what Morton was thinking right there. He just full throttled it. And there goes his engine expiring. You don't, can't park there. Gonna have to request a tow right there. And he does take it behind the wall. His night is done in the 23. as well as Weston Ward, he takes it behind the wall. His night is done at Martinsville as well. So two DNFs, Michael Whitaker still trying to repair the damage on his number 24 machine and Tyler Justice as well, trying to repair some damage after his incident on this current caution that we are under 18 laps on the board out of 140. We're getting there. We are, we're making progress. currently have uh, 12 viewers in chat if there's anyone you'd like uh, to see an update on definitely let us know and we'll make sure to uh, get them on the screen and uh, show you how their night is going yeah so far we're going to keep an eye on some of the biggest movers who have worked their way up through the field right now currently that goes to matt bell started 24th he sits in 11th position in the number 20 machine actually number 43 is what he's showing on screen thanks to trading paints so we'll see how he does. But unfortunately for Danny Hansen, he is also out of the race along with Tyler Justice. So four retirements left are now out of the race. 21 cars are still racing. 20 cars are on track as Michael Whitaker is trying to repair the damage to rejoin the race as lights around on the pace car. And we will hopefully go back, restart racing here once again and hopefully go a little further than about four or five laps. Some of you may have noticed the ticker looks a little different this week. If you do want to have your custom number displayed during our broadcast, uh, make sure to fill out our form at gridvision.live. Absolutely. And if you are also looking to start your career in esports broadcasting, reach out to us on Gridvision through our social media platforms as the green flag is out. 
and we have openings in both commentating and in production work. So send us your resume. We'll be glad to have you happy to have you on board one of the fastest growing esports broadcasting networks in the business as we go side by side for the fourth position between Warrens and Clemens as Warrens will try to power that ESE Chevrolet around the outside as they try to battle further back between the five and Mike Bruno, who Bruno was able to drop back to seven. John Williams makes the run and pulls ahead. Yeah, your door boy Darby, he needs a break. He'll definitely do think you produce. Come on board. <laughs> Absolutely, as they, we pick up the field, working their way side by side. As the 43 machine of Matt Bell is trying to break up into the top 10, which he is in ninth and trying to get more. As one driver has an issue, that's the 54 machine. Tough break right there. That was Ryan Parks who was able to gather it back up, but still, close call for him. Bell is able to get around Dustin Tank for the position. And he is now going to try to close in on Clemens and Mike Bruno, who are just drag racing each other for that sixth position. Bruno goes to the inside and makes the pass complete in that 88 Chevrolet. Yeah, this is a very move. They're very tight there, but the 67 try thinking about uh, doing a crossover, but uh, doesn't have the run to do that, so decides to just get on the break, but we do have a caution in the back and it looks like Hunter involved. Yep, the Raptor Racing Graphics 27 Toyota has some problems for Hunter Lagoons and he will have to loop it around and will rejoin the race. Lagoons, isn't that like a PD? Oh, he might try, was trying to check up a little bit for the incident that happened ahead of him by the looks of it i've been there watching the cars in front of me and not on my break <laughs> yep that was richard allen and eddie rose who got together and that 42 machine has seen better days With that, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll hopefully have more racing action here at Martinsville. You're watching Monday Night Top Split live on Grid Vision.
Welcome, welcome back to Grid Vision's coverage of the Ryko Performance Monday Night Stop Split here for the B Open. And we are about to take the green flag once again. Heading down into the restart zone, Garrett Mains checks out over Quinton Warman. Chad Sullivan will go side by side, trying to get that second spot away from Warman. Meanwhile, a little further back, John Williams, Mike Bruno, and, and Robert Warren's battle for that third spot as they head off into turn three and four. How about Bruno going to the top side? Once again, these two battling. Uh, hopefully after uh, this restart, we'll see a little bit more competition between the two. And maybe we'll see the that, is, that bell gets all the way there. Well, just as you say that, Bruno just shoves Bell down the track a little bit to give him some room as he still is stuck on the outside. Bell still maintaining the inside. Here comes Ryan Hart with a head of steam as he's inside the top 10 comfortably. Patrick Leroy right there behind in the 22, watching and waiting in the corridors, ready to make an attack, but he is under pressure from Jared Mo Mogard as well as Dustin Tanks as they come out of turn number four. A real good battle for that final top 10 positioning as they come down into turn one. How about Hearts in this comeback since being involved in the very first caution of the race here? He's been uh, driving like a bat out of hell. He certainly is. I mean, he was definitely not happy about the situation that happened on the early But now he has just drove his way up through the field and looking to try to capitalize on some good things for him as they work down the back straightaway. Single file now. Everyone now trying to just settle into a rhythm, get themselves some laps logged in, and try to see what they can do as Gary and Norman, well, they've checked out on the competition. Yeah, right. Ready to say that. I do the class. Oh, well, there we go. As soon as we're talking about him, he uh, decided to go back to hell, I guess. The commentator's curse strikes again for the driver of Ryan Hart as he just lost it off corner eight. And here's a replay of the 54 here. We'll see him uh, lose a little control, tries to correct it, and uh, just continues to go into the wall. And uh, pays the barrels in, is it? Yep, hits a little bit of the bales, and then we'll continue on his way. And uh, I'll bring you a cockpit view here. Uh, no replay transition. Another great vision bug tonight. Oh, just overcorrects the car right there, and hits the wall and loops it around off corner exit. Good job by the other drivers though to avoid him as he was uh, perpendicular to the track there. He, he certainly a great drive by all the competitors there. So we'll see how they will able to continue on here. But as we pick up through the field, some back markers do decide to come down pit road. Drivers such as Eddie Rose decided to stay out. Adam Wright on pit road. Of course, the driver of Michael Mitchell Lancaster, Hunter Legumes, Andrew Jones, Ryan Hart, all coming down to fix some damage. But for the rest of the field, they decide to stay out for the time being. Of course, as we look at the point standing right now for the NASCAR B Open Series, eight weeks have been completed so far. It's Brandon Houck who leads the overall championship with Zach Rinker, Jimmy Norman, your top three. Then couple of the drivers such as Quentin Warman he's at six positions so far this season he's on a t stellar drive this season so far out of the 14 starts he's made at over these seven weeks that he's raced he's got five wins 11 top fives and an average finish of fifth position he's definitely going to be one to watch as a championship favorite and then of course a couple of other drivers who are in this field uh, John Williams who's currently sitting in fifth position he's got Two wins to his name so far with an average finish of 13th with four top five finishes. Mike Bruno, who sits 10th in the championship, has a total of six wins and an average finish of 10th. Uh, Brandon Houck, does, does he know we're doing this? We haven't seen him race yet. I, I would really like to uh, watch, watch our points leader at least in one race. <laughs> I think he usually does race the race when we're covering the A Open race usually, so that's one of the ones he goes for on Monday nights, but we have seen him on a couple of uh, B Open races at this time of the evening. We need to start convincing those guys to start running A Open first and then come join us for B Open. Yeah, exactly, or just run the B Open race period at this time. Because if it's not broadcast, it, it, did, did it really happen? I don't know, I don't think so. Well, according to the points, it did, but let's not talk uh, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about that, Nate. 
So field now working their way through. And double back up, ready to go. Less than 100 laps to go for our competitors. As they work their way down into the back straightaway, Fred, the pace car driver, will make the hard left turn down onto pit road as Mains and Warman will lead us once again as a Ryko front row with a Ryko driver who won in the A open race. And another Ryko driver win tonight, or will someone else steal a victory away as they enter into the restart zone? Green flag is out. The Raging Cajun is definitely getting on the back bumper as here we see Garrett Maines pulling away from Sullivan, trying to push Warman up through and trying to see if he can get up to second, but not going to work this time as your two Ryko drivers to pull away as there's an issue further back. Eddie Rose and Hunter Lagunes having some troubles in the back straightaway. Yeah, we'll have a view of that in a few moments here once I uh, find the caution here. Garrett Maines voicing some displeasure in this race along with a couple of other of the front runners. Right there, you see the 11 of Dylan Murcott just putting the back bumper to Lagunes and several others. Oh, and we have and another expired Ray engine, and it looks like uh, it was the red car there. Yeah, Lagunes has taken it behind the wall. His night is done. I have a feeling Ryan Hart's also, his night's about to be done because he doesn't have a hood or his nose is completely crumpled up. And I gotta say, that engine's gonna be overheating pretty quickly. And expiring right there. And then his hood falls off with it. That hood got good distance, though. Holy. It, uh, he got more distance than uh, Joey Gase throwing his back bumper on Cram on Saturday. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, out of all the things I've seen a driver thrown at another driver, I've never seen a rear bumper. Yeah, usually uh, hel helmets, but you know, uh, you know, if you pay for your own helmet, I would honestly rather throw a piece of the car than my own helmet. Well, the reason, I mean, thankfully it was in a full-on car body. You know, the driver was that was getting thrown at stuff was in a safer place. I've seen karting drivers thrown full-on front noses of a cart in front of another driver. That, that, that doesn't end well. Well, that guy, isn't that guy like banned permanently from all karting yeah. now? That, that's a pretty indeed. viral video, that one there. Yeah, that was pretty viral a couple of years ago, indeed. And thank, Thankfully, safety and the officials realized that he should be. So, thankfully, they're not banning Joey Gase for throwing a, a rear bumper at the windshield of a car. Yeah, well, you know, I like to have a little bit of... Uh professionalism in my my uh professional motorsports you know it doesn't not everything needs to be uh was it bowman gray no and fortunately for ryan hartz he is going to be out of the race and speaking of bowman gray you know nascar is now one of the managing partners and directors over at bowman gray stadium so scan my track <laughs> let's see about the madhouse coming to I racing in the near future. I gotta say, if we do get that, it, it, we're, we're gonna need to put some virtual uh, boxing rings, and then the drivers who get into these fights have to get into a VR mask and do some wee boxing. The street stocks are going to be hype there. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see. Hopefully, hashtag soon. Towards I racing as they enter into the restart zone. It's gonna be Mains and Bro and Warman who will lead us to the field. Green flag is out. There goes Garrett Main. And Warns in the number nine will follow suit in third. Two by two, several rows back here as we have the usual suspects battling out and uh, simple live. Absolutely, they're going to try to get themselves sorted out. I think. Oh, as I say that, twenty-two. Patrick Lee will get three sixty. Gathered it up. Yeah, honestly, not for how many spins there, you know, and the 200 points of his Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for doing a pop shove it, but uh, he uh, doesn't have a whole lot of damage. 
no, not too much damage, so he's going to gather it up and continue on his way. That is one of the benefits of racing short tracks is, you know, damage is not a... It's going to affect your car, but not too much, as a couple of other drivers get a big save there, as there you see, and it's 360 spin for the 22. Yeah, the, four, uh, the 42 there actually looked like uh, he got the worst of that. Absolutely. So we'll see how this plays out for our competitors as we are under, I'm guessing, what, our sixth caution now? Yeah, it's an arm day for the flag man there. Every day is arm day. Every day is our every 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year is arm day for Barney the Flagman. Twig legs. <laughs> well, leg day, see, I mean, you think about it, he's standing up there continuously. I stand quite a bit, and uh, I notice I'm putting on some pounds there. It doesn't, it doesn't quite do the trick you think it would. Yeah, absolutely, I, I have to agree with that one, and of course, Fred, the pace car driver, you know, the all-time lap leader in all things racing here on the iRacing platform. No, I disagree. That's actually uh, Benny. I, I agree. It, it is Benny, but we have to go by what iRacing... No, but, well, Benny got kicked out of the car just a few weeks ago. Like, this is a new career, new stats, starting from zero. Benny, all-time leader. Benny is the all-time leader, and Fred, of course, got a lot of work to do. He's got a good few years to catch up on Benny. Well, if the service keeps growing at the rate it is, it won't be too long before uh, he's able to catch just more races being ran. Yeah, absolutely. More series. I mean, we just are half, pretty much at, not even at the half. We're at the third distance, pretty much. Or quarter distance for these drivers as, you know, we're half quarter through the season. A lot of things have been happening on a lot of people utilizing in the rain racing when it comes to sports cars and open wheel racing. We won't really see that happening on the oval side probably for a good little bit. But who knows what can happen as racing continues to grow and progress. The updates, you know, we have the career mode coming in 2025. So a lot of things possibly could come into play when it comes to iRacing in the near future. Career mode is going to be fun. You know, I can take out all my anger on uh, AI and, uh, not, you know, not cop a ban or get any protest. Uh, I Watch AI finally have the ability to protest drivers in the future. Be careful of that. Well, I'm assuming it's a bit of a no-no, but I almost guarantee you there are a few members on the service who actually are AI drivers. Some of them probably would be. Well, the lights are out all the chase car. Brett will make the hard left turn down on the pit road as a couple of stragglers try to catch up to the tail end of the field. As it's going to be Mains and Warman, Warren's Clemens, Williams Bell, Bruno, Mogar, Hank, and Sullivan who will lead us to the green flag. 55 laps out of 140 completed as they hit the restart zone. Mains checks out with another great jump on the field. Warman tries to stay tucked up along with Warren, who is right there behind him. Battling for second as he throws a block, Sullivan. Trying to work, or Clemens trying to work his way through as we watch on Chad Sullivan and a couple of others battling for that 10th spot. Yeah, one of the more clean starts that we've had. Not uh, They singled out really quickly compared to most of the other restarts. But uh, yeah, it looks like even top 10 now just decided to go single wide here up until our view here. Actually, it looks like uh, Battle 4 9. As one car goes loose right there, that was a 25 machine. That was the driver of Adam Wright. He gathers it back up in the Outlier Speed Company. Yep. Great save for him. The car does have a bit of damage, probably most from uh, previous wrecks, but uh, just making the most of what he can. He really is. He's, trying, he's still out there surviving. He's going to get a good top 20 finish at the very least. We only have 17 cars out there on the track. 20, or about 19 still in the session. Whitaker and Gene trying to see if they can repair their damage to rejoin the race later on. And so far, 17 cars on the track as a little further back, you see drivers such as 
the 21 machine of Tank, Murcott, and Allen throwing Mogard in the mix as trying to battle for position for the ninth spot. You survived 60 laps in Class B Open. Now let's see you do that in NIS. Uh, yeah, good luck to everyone racing Friday night as they go 250 laps at Martinsville. That's going to be a fun night, uh, of course, for the Martinsville Speedway. As Warman is closing in on Garrett Mains as he is trying to close the gap. He's running a tick faster than Mains. Last time Bailey come across the line again, he's still faster than Garrett Mains. You're right on board with the Ryko driver of Quinton Warman, who is slowly but surely coming through. Of course, tonight's race is brought to you by Ryko Performance. For all of your setup shop needs, visit RykoPerformance.gg to get the latest in setups that are the requirements to help you win and the and NASCAR iRacing Series, such as you see drivers such as Mains, Warman, and Broman being some of the top competitors when it comes to racing in the NIS, as well as A, B, and C Open. They also offer special one-on-one -on -one coaching, as well as also some of the most premier setups in NASCAR, short track, and road racing as trouble for one driver, that being the driver of... Alex Jones. Alex Jones. A Andrew Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Andrew Jones able to loop it around though. We stayed green flag racing, thank goodness. 65 laps on the board. We're closing in on the halfway point here. But Jones is about to be put a lap down by Garrett Mains here in a few moments as he is losing time. So he's got to be careful with that as here comes Mains and Warman out of turn four. Alex Jones doing some eye racing commentary. You know, he, he's looking for money. Maybe we get him in here somewhere. Oh, goodness, that would be some very difficult situations, I have to say. Your channel's been banned for monetization. <laughs> Your channel's just been banned, period. <laughs> no. But as we watch this battle here, a little further back for the third position between Warns and Clemens, he's got on deal with drivers such as John Williams, Matt Bell, and Chad Sullivan as they battle for that third position. Clemens trying to find the opening there in the rapid racing Chevrolet as he looks to the inside of the Elliott Sadler Esports machine. Good to see them still competing in esports competition. Not in the eNASCAR series like we have in years past, but still involved heavily as the caution comes out. I believe Adam Wright might be involved in this one. As he is, along with Patrick Leroy and several others. Yeah, it looks like uh, four cars involved in this uh, incident here. As we uh, take the replay. Yep, more of the same, just uh, other cars not able to get around them. Yeah, tough break. Lo looks like the wheel spin's coming into play big time here. Halfway. Halfway, we are halfway, and everybody but three drivers come down pit road. Yeah, uh, yeah, everyone but Garrett Mains, Quint Warman, Dylan, Dylan Murcott. Do they know something that we don't? We'll see how this plays out. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I've won a race at Martinsville in these cars without having to come down pit road even when other drivers do come down to the surface, they're tight. Let's uh, take a quick update on the weather and see how incorrect or how wrong I was. Track temperature still the same, I believe. 74, is that what it was? It's still showing 74 degrees right now for the track temperature, so not as cool, but we'll see how that progresses before the end of the race for sure. Air temp has definitely gone down, so it was correct there. And, you know, with the track staying the same temperature, we'll just say I'm correct. I like being correct. Just, just got a word from Mr. Ryko himself, Kenneth Brion, who just messaged me. Byron? Telling me that, yep, yep, Byron. He just swept, that they have swept all three opening SOF races tonight. So... If you want to be one of the top drivers to win, go visit Ryko right now. 
because if you saw a little bit in the A Open race, Joseph Joseph won the A Open top split. John Hathaway won the B Open prior to this one. And Noah Bits ended up winning the C Open race with the truck. So make sure to go and visit Mr. Ryko at rykoperformance.gg. And you can definitely come out on top with a win in any of the top three series. And it looks like they're about to go back to back with the B Open races here possibly soon because nobody has come close to touching Garrett Mains or Quentin Warman. Yeah, we've seen uh, some people think that they could challenge, but uh, as of right now, uh, you know, just utter domination by the two of them. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely there, Austin. And a lot of things still to come. I mean, there's still a lot of bit of racing. We'll see how the strategy call that some of these drivers have made will play out. But still, I mean, you have four cars that stayed out. Bell also decided to stay out as well. Nope, Bell did come down pit road, I believe. Yes, yes he did. Bell will be the first car um, on fresh arms when we take the green. You know what? We'll hop on to his tire here and uh, have a good look at the restart. He certainly is as Mains and Warman doesn't get that good of a start, but Bell will try to get the outside lane going and see if he can make a run around the outside to see if he can at least get third away from the 11 of Dylan Murcott, which he, Murcott, which he does. As we're going to go crazy racing here, two by two, as they try to make short work of the 11 of Dylan Murcott. Ooh, right there. Plemons try to get Matt Bell pushed up the racetrack side by side for third as they drag race. Caution is out as Chad Sullivan and Dustin Tank have some problems off turn two. Chad Sullivan in the Reaper Speed Lab Rage and Cajun Bail Bonds Ford. Definitely uh, not happy about the situation. Yeah, we're getting a lot of use out of the Grid Vision Chopper today. Our uh, aviation fuel bill is going to be fairly expensive, but uh, yeah, we see Chad Sullivan just getting loose there and getting used up got a little used up but we'll gather it back up to continue on not too much damage to that 21 forward but hopefully he will work his way through and catch back up to the tail end of the field so a lot of things still to come this week on grid vision of course tomorrow is another double header night You'll be able to join Brian Britt, Austin Derbyshire, as well as also Austin Edstrom for the Champions Power Equipment Truck Series at Martinsville Speedway. And then right alongside that, a little before the events at Martinsville, join myself and Joe Peak as we bring you the season finale for the Stars Championship Series as their finale heads to Sebring for GT3 and GT4 competition. And then Wednesday night, myself, Nick Stein, and Austin Derbyshire are back at it once again at Michigan for the Thunderclap iRacing Series presented by TLC Incorporated as we kick off the Dash for Cash presented by Pine Gulf at Michigan with the Gen 4 cars. Don't worry, though. Thursday Night Thunder will return once again in May, but we still have some openings for great broadcasting nights on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday nights as Friday night is dedicated to our Ryko Performance Friday Night Top Split NIS Racing We'll be back here at Martinsville. Make sure to submit your driver info also at Grid Vision Live to get your information, your stats, and everything we can know about you, the driver, during these broadcasted events. Yeah, those uh, info sheets that we have uh, hosted on GridVision.Live are about as powerful as a tool as we can have to uh, bring across the best product to our customers. Definitely not having me on the mic here, but uh, graphics-wise, that is uh, the best thing we, you can do. Absolutely. Now we just got to get our merchandise ready to go. <laughs> Merch. <laughs> so the field will line up behind the pace car once again as we get set to go racing here at Martinsville in a few moments' time. As they work their way, should we get the one to go this time? I think the answer is going to be... Yes. Oh, yeah. one to go. 
they were all pretty antsy already trying to get uh, too wide there. That's uh, usually can tell. 60 laps left to go in the race here, and we've been making short work of it, surprisingly, regarding the 140 laps, the 30 laps of extra. Yeah, uh, we've had a few bit more longer runs as of this point than we did in the open, and uh, let's uh, hope that trend continues. Hopefully that's the case. Hopefully we can get at least a little bit of a longer run. Let's, let's try to get at least a 20-lap run in here tonight. As green flag is out, Warman and Maine leave us. Here comes Matt Bell and Aaron Clemens, who will go side by side. Clemens on the outside tries to get the run off the corner exit, but Bell on the outside. They'll stay tucked up inside of him as they head off into turn three and four. Warns right there as Bell will push Clemens up the racetrack, leaving the chance for Murcott and Williams to close the gap as they head off into turn one once again. Bell sends it in deep and clears him, moving him up to P3. And moving a couple spots back, we have the 95 here and the 11 of Dylan Murcott battling out for P5. Uh, and it looks like the ESE driver of uh, Robert Warns is just going to edge him out there. It certainly is the case as we watch that number five machine working his way through. He's got a good run as we watch the drivers going through the field. Williams in the number five. Team Conti machine gets himself up into the sixth spot as he now will try to chase down the Elliott Sadler Esports driver of Robert Warns. Yeah, don't get John Williams confused with number 17, 16, or uh, 1 through 5 for that matter. This is John Williams, 21. <laughs> exactly. This is the 21st John Williams on the iRacing platform. I wonder, same, <laughs> I wonder if it's the same John Williams over 21 times. Great he music. Just forgot his password. <laughs> that might have been number 13, though. Well, as we watch, they're now single file for the moment, but here comes Matt Bell with those fresh tires, and he is closing quickly to the back bumper of Quentin Warman. The question is, now that he's caught him, can he pass him? As it's Ford versus Toyota coming out of turn number two. Yeah, you think with as fresh tires as he has in comparison to the two cars in front of him, he would not have a hard time uh, getting around, but uh, that's the beauty of Martinsville. We've seen 42 people win this race with old tires. And uh, Adam Wright has jumped to the pits. Adam Wright has jumped down to pit road, and he is out of the race, leaving 16 cars out on the track, 15 of them on the lead lap. So Richard Allen trying to work his way up through the field right now. He sits 13th, giving way to a couple of drivers, such as Patrick Leroy. As they work their way through, we go a little further back. As we watch and wait to see, can Matt Bell get around the drivers of Warman and Mains? As Leroy, as well as a couple of other drivers, are uh, voicing some displeasure amongst each other. So we'll see how that plays out. They're playing nice now but they're going to keep on racing here for a moment as we pick up the 42 machine. That was Richard, Richard Allen that we have here. Unfortunately, uh, looks like uh, he is... Uh, actually, no, he is one of the few cars there, but he's going to be enough. Uh, going through our telemetry here, it seems like uh, a couple of cars were a lap behind, but uh, they are not. No, they are minding their P's and Q's. That's the first car and only car one lap down. That's Patrick Leroy in the 22 orange machine as the 18 of Eddie Rose goes a little too high up the track. As Patrick is letting the driver of Richard Allen quit running him over when they come across each other again. Matthew Bell fighting for P2 now finally. He gets his opening. Can he clear Warman off turn two four? He does. And now sets his sights on Garrett Maines. The problem is Garrett Maines, he's about a tenth faster than Matt Bell at the moment. And Bell has, of course, oh, I would say 70 lap over or pressure tires in your race leader. He is the power of Goose decent poutine on his side, I believe in Matt Bell. <laughs> Matt Bell is going to try to make a run. He is now running similar lap times to your race leader, Garrett Mays. I think the only issue was that he just had a 
try to find pace and get around Warman quickly, which he was able to. Look at the glow now, coming from those brakes around the corners. Yeah, we're really getting a good chance to see the amazing cameras from Whiplash Cams and Andrew Cardinal. There you see the lights are glowing on those brakes here. He's trying to continue on his way down the back straightaway. A good shot right there. You see the bright orange glow of those brakes. Thankfully, we don't have brakes exploding. We have tires exploding in these races, but no brakes exploding. Look at that. It's physics right there. It is. It's absolute physics, and it's some great hard work from the people at iRacing that gives us these amazing quality details of how the handling of these cars are. As, oh, big wiggle right there from Matt Bell off corner exit. He's still in the same time. In fact, was faster than your race leader and is closing. He's half a, about six tenths of a second separates him from Garrett Maines. Yeah, the uh, last lap there, um, he was about three tenths faster, or three one hundredths rather. And as they come across the line, he was a little slower that time, let, about a little over a tenth slower. Warman's right there in the spot, and then they have a one and a half second lead over Robert Ward's in the number nine. Or actually, I'm sorry, 95. Keeping an eye on the field as we pick up Garrett Maines. Bell with a little wall contact there, but uh, well, he did lose a little bit of time to warm in after that contact. And yeah, uh, you can't see it on the right side of his car there. Yeah, just a little bit of damage, a little bit of a scrape right there to that 43 Toyota with the Logitech G sponsorship. Coming to 40 to go here. Their main still in the lead, led uh, almost every lap, right? I believe so. I think Quentin War or uh, Quentin Warman has led a few laps here at the start of the race, but I believe you're right. He has led just about every lap, and he's pulled some amazing strategy to where he has absolutely dominated, even with 70 lap older tires. I guess As that's why. Bell gives way. I guess that's why he's that black license, and uh, I'm struggling. Oh, there, Bell around. Bell is around. Significant damage to the rear end. Yeah, it's at the power of poutine, not the power of maple syrup on track. Tough break right there for those drivers as Gary Maines also might have had a close call indeed with Mitchell Lancaster as well. He just went to the outside, not his normal line, and uh, got a little loose there. We'll uh, take another view from on board. Ninety degrees on the wheel there. Probably a little bit too much there, more than you'd want. And how about this? Garrett Maines and Mr. Quentin Warman all come down pit road. Every single driver has decided to come down pit road. A first pit stop of the night for your race leaders. As they get themselves situated here. As there you see the 17 of Mitchell Lancaster. There you see the close contact that he had almost with Garrett Maines as Richard Allen decides to stay out. Big call, I have to say, right there for him of the 42. Yeah, Richard Allen pinned this time by. Yeah, I have to say that would be the smart call. Garrett Maines wins the race off pit road. Quentin Warman second. Robert Warren's third. John Williams and Jared Mogard will be your top five. We'll take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll hopefully bring you the conclusion here. 35 laps left to go here tonight at Martinsville.
welcome back to the Ryko Performance Monday Night Top Split as we're back at it with the B Opens here. Under 35 laps to go as Garrett Maines checks out once again on the field as he will lead the charge. But here comes Warman and Warrens as they battle for that second spot. Throwing John Williams in the Team Conti machine as he tries to make a run for the third spot here tonight. Yeah, Williams uh, making his way up through the field, uh, battling very hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, sticking it to the outside and dives down low as soon as he's clear. He will clear him off of turn number two. Meanwhile, the battle for the fifth spot between Clemens and Mogard will be strong, but Mogard will drop back into line. Bruno, Sullivan, and Tank battling for the seventh spot. I'm expecting Sullivan to win this battle here, being on the inside and just seeing what we've seen from him earlier in the race. And uh, he does get around Tank, and now the 11 is looking to do the same. Here comes Dylan Murcott to move up a spot. He will clear Tank through that position. Move him up to P9, drop Tank to 10. As here comes Andrew Jones. He looks to the inside of the number one UTI machine. As he tries to get the spot, give a little shove up the track. As trouble for Clemens. What happened there? 500 points of those Tony Hawks Pro Skater. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I think we lost count of how many cautions we were at. We at least at 10. As there you see Clemens around, and he has taken it oh, behind the wall. And then he expired. He is done for the night. We'll get another on board here. So then uh, we see his inputs and uh, hear the engine pop at the end. Coming out of corner exit, just overcorrects it, and boom. Hey, if you ever have to crank your wheel all the way like that, you know you're not doing it right. Yeah, you're 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 safe to say your time is done. Yeah, as he uh, exited the vehicle there, we saw the wheel turn all the way to the left, the whole rotation. So uh, we know the wheel definitely went the wrong way. Maybe maybe disconnect or something like that of the wheel. Seems to be the case here as uh, some fans in the concession stands wanting to get their Martinsville dog, but uh. Fortunately, the concession stands were closed at the time. Yeah, that's a life goal. You know, I, I have a hot dog, like, bucket list. And, like, on there's the Dodger dog, the Martinsville dog. You know, I definitely want the Whistle dog to come back to a before I die. Man, you know, there's a lot on there. But definitely Martinsville. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that one. So we'll see how this plays out for our drivers. Showing eight minutes left to go in the race, so hopefully we can keep it clean and green to make it to the end. Yeah, the, you know, the slightly longer than expected race this week, but, uh, you know, uh, 140 laps in Martinsville, not really that much. Uh, definitely enough to uh, get the adrenaline going. Yep, we'll see how this all plays out for our competitors here. See who is going to be able to come out on top for this race. As a couple of drivers do come down pit road. Light should be out on the pace car next time by clear leaders. As one driver has been working hard, him and his pit crew, that's Mitchell Lancaster, they have repaired over nine minutes of damage on their car in this race. That is a lot of damage. I have to agree. Flex tape, I'm waiting for money. <laughs> Slap it on there. As the lights are out on the pace car, we have 14 cars on the lead lap. 15 on the track, and then two that are on the road right now. 17 cars left in the session. So we'll see how this all plays out as they enter into turn three. Fred makes the hard left turn out on pit road. As part of the flag man, get those arms a pumping. It's time to wave the green flag once again as they head off into the restart zone and back at it. There you see Garrett and pull away once again. That looks like a jump start there, but uh we'll Oh, see that's what, not good. Yeah, that's Oh, oh, saves it. 
saves it indeed. How about that? Burkott getting a big help from chat from the driver of Robert Warns, who nearly turns him but saves him. Taking a look at that restart here from the view of Warns. Or Murcott, sorry, Murcott. Yep, Dylan Murcott, there you see him. He gets a good jump. And then it's missed ship right there by Warrens, who decides to then send it in four wide. And then right there, Warrens just puts him back together. All right, going back live here, we got a battle for P1 here. Warman and uh, Mains here. Looks like Warman gonna get that lead. Warman will get the race lead off turn number four and clears him. And now we'll set the pace to see if he can pull away 20 laps to go next time, or now 20 laps to go next time by for your race leaders as John Williams is trying to close in. And we just saw Mains get super loose there around the corner. Definitely was uh, tr tr trying to give it to Warman there and uh, make him earn that top spot. But it is look, does look like Warman is just able to get a few lengths ahead, of, ahead now. He's trying his best to do so as they make the run down the back straightaway here. You're right on board with Garrett Maines as he's trying to close the gap a little bit, but he's got quite a bit of work to do as they head down into turn three and four, start to pull away about a car length, separate the two. Yep, coming up to uh, 19 to go here. Uh, it will be remain to be seen if he has anything. Mormon doing the best that he can as they come through the corner here, and he is trying to hold the gap between himself and Garrett Mays as they come out of turn number four and across the line. Under 20 laps left to go in the race, and they are starting to set the pace and stretch out that race lead once again. John Williams still holds third position. Bruno, Mr. Consistency himself, is trying to get a good top five finish. Jared Morgad, or Morgard, holds the fifth spot, but he's got to deal with Andrew Jones and Chad Sullivan right there behind him. Yeah, now with uh, Bell further back, we can upgrade Jared Morgan to our biggest mover up tonight and up uh, 11 positions as of right now. Going to try to make the run as they work their way out of turn number four, but here comes Chad Sullivan in that Reaper Speed Lab Tumblr 21 machine. He's trying to get the run going to get back in the top five, but so far not going to work as Jones tries to follow him. Caution is out as uh, Richard Allen. Not the night he was hoping for. Yeah, gets, uh, spends uh, time in pit road and uh, looks like he might have to spend a little bit more. Well, let's see here. Richard Allen just loops it around. No help. Just all by himself, a little wheel hop, a little overshooting the corner. That will do it. As a couple of people decide to come down pit road, warns Bell, the double zero machine, the 21 up tank. So split strategy for some drivers, I have to say. Yeah, Mogar giving up that most positions gained uh, in order for a little bit of advantage here in the last... 13 laps that are we're going to have here probably 11 by the time we get going uh don't know if that's enough to uh make any considerable ground up on the field maybe get right just before the top five not into the top five but right around the six seven position possibly so we'll see how this plays out for our competitors as the field works their way across the line, lights are still on the pace car, hopefully two to green next time by, and then we'll go back at it with just about 10 laps to go. A little view from the Great Vision blimp, a little bit cheaper than uh, the Great Vision chopper, that's for sure. <laughs> Trying to save some money, and of course, if your business or if your business is interested in partnering with us here at Great Vision, we have some great offers. You can be, of course, one of the main people who brings us some more great coverage on some of the official series. We're trying to work with a couple of official series. A lot of people have been enjoying our Monday and Friday night shows for sure. And, you know, we want to continue to grow the community a lot. So make sure to follow us on our social media platforms 
reach out to us if you are wanting to be a potential partner. We can't thank the amazing partners at Ryko Performance for working with us to make sure you get the chance to see our Monday and Friday night shows each and every week throughout the NASCAR iRacing season. We only really cover throughout the NASCAR season, so from Daytona to Phoenix is when you'll see us covering this. Tell your kids, tell your wife, because we brought gas in every race up in here. And tell your husband. That's not how the saying goes, you know? Hide your kids, no. hide your wife, tell your kids, tell your wife. Oh, I was thinking of the another saying, too. Oh. Hide your kids, hide your wife. You know the rest. <laughs> yes. Well, lights are out on the pace car, so... For drivers such as uh, Garrett Mains and Quentin Foreman, I they hope that... Uh, no one else is going to hide a wreck or a spin before this is all said and done. No, I'm calling it. Green to the end. Done it. I called it. All right. Well, it's going to be 10 laps to go when they take the green flag here from Barney. So let's see what will happen here. Will Warman get the win? Will Garrett Maines get the win? Or will someone else do it? Warman jumps through the field and begins to pull away great jump by him mains follows suit in second as bruno tries to come around the top side we haven't talked much about bruno but trouble for several drivers you, you jinxed it there austin told you, you. Jinxed it there. told you not the move not at martinsville not the move this isn't uh like auto club or any of those uh any of those tracks where you can really take the set of tires and make a difference but uh ah, it's unfortunate for more right here but uh we'll definitely take a look from the chopper put the burly oh, bird back in the air well we can do we can definitely say uh we've hit over 15 cautions in this race no if, you don't think so no how, how short are we uh well i can't pull it up because uh it would Take us out of the immersion, but I'm sure you can find that out for us. Uh, I'll see what I can do. What a nice looking pop. It's not orange enough for my liking, though. Oh, and there's uh, the fans. Still haven't got anything from the concession. I think it's closed, guys. Uh, we're at 12. 12. Ha. Knew it. My, inter well, we my internal calculator just wasn't adding up. Hey, say, well, you know what? I said we were going to hit under 15 cautions, too. So we are still in a good shot of not hitting that. Uh, A open. That's only one green white, right? Uh, yes. So, and I think this one is two or three. This is the official B open that follows the entire B open schedule. Okay, yeah, so it probably would be right. three. Yeah. I'll take a look. I don't, I don't know the product, man. Don't know the product. Shame on me. <laughs> Doesn't say anything in the rules. So let me see the info. See here, five sets of tires for these drivers. Four tires. Oh, it doesn't say anything regarding green white checkers. But we might have a natural green white checker here for us because lights are out. Nope, it's going to be a five, four lap finish. Four lap Death. shootout. Hopefully. I told you, no more cautions. I told you. You said that last time. Sure, I did. Yeah, okay. We'll have to go back and listen to that the replay on that one. I want video so, video proof, and there's no way you can ever have video proof of that being said. <laughs> well, they enter into the restart zone. Warman and Mains, can they get the jump? Warman goes, Mains follows, but here comes John Williams with a head of steam. 
down to the inside to try to break up the Ryko team. But so far, not going to work, but the Team Conti driver is out of the inside to try to get third away. Reefer Speed Lab sits in fourth as they come through the middle of turn three and four. Three laps to go for your race leaders. They come across the line. They've got to make it three more times around, gentlemen. Let's try to keep it clean. Warman holds the gap here as they come out of turn number two by about two cars. Down the back straight. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's been a very impressive drive by Warman. You know, uh, to have the... It takes a lot to sit behind someone like Gary Maines if you do know you have the stuff to pass him. And to be able to just do it when it mattered and come out here and lead these final laps. Is, uh, nothing more you can want out of a race, really. Absolutely. And as he leads the field through turn three and four, he will get the white flag one more time around here at Martinsville for Quentin Warman. He is looking to try to increase his chances of getting the points lead here in the Open Series. And he's about to do it here and go back to back with Ryko Performance B Open wins out of turn number four. Quentin Warman in the Ryko Performance Sim Seat Ford Mustang wins at Martinsville. Yeah, Garrett Maines in second, John Williams 21 and third. And with that, that is a Ryko Performance victory here for the driver of Quentin Warman. As every, we had 13 drivers finish the race and 11 on the lead lap. Very, very impressive night by Ryko Motorsports, or performance. Yes, indeed, as he will burn it down, as he burns it down, we'll take a step aside for a quick word from our amazing partners, and when we come back, we'll hopefully have the chance to talk to Quentin Woman and Garrett Maines and John Williams next. After these words, you're watching the Ryko Performance Monday Night Top Split live on Grid Vision. Welcome back to the Ryko Performance Monday Night Top Split here at Martinsville. It's Quentin Warman, your race winner, followed by Garrett Maines, John Williams, Chad Sullivan, and Mike Bruno getting your top five finish here tonight. Patrick Leroy being one of your biggest movers, picking up 13 spots, followed by Richard Allen in seventh, Matt Bell, Dylan Murcott, Eddie Rose, Robert Warren, Mitchell Lancaster, Dustin Tank, Andrew Jones, Jared Morgad, Aaron Plemons, Adam Wright, Hunter Lagoon, Ryan Hartz and Michael Whitaker rounding out your top 20. And then, of course, further on down the field, Josh Gein, Danny Hanson, Weston Ward, Tyler Justice, and Nick Mort did not finish as well as 11 cars finished on the lead lap and about 13 finished the race. So a tough night here for those in Martinsville. We'll, we'll get a chance, though, to speak to our race winner. He drives that number 84 Ryko machine, making it a Ryko sweep here for our Monday night top split. Quinton Warman joins us in the booth. Quinton. A great night for you, but talk to us. How were you able to pull off that run to get around Garrett Mays? 
Uh, dirty air is a really big thing here, so I knew I wasn't be able to wasn't gonna be able to pass him without moving him. So I was just trying to put the pressure on as much as possible. And luckily, yeah. he was able to make a mistake, and I was able to drive under him. Yeah, you certainly were able to, and once you took the lead, you never looked back. So absolutely a great drive and performance by you. Anyone you would like to give a shout out to? I'd like to give a shout out to Brandon at Ryko. This setup is phenomenal. No, no one could touch me and Garrett the entire night. Well, we have to give you a big thank you for coming in here tonight and talking with us, and a congratulations on your victory, and thank you for giving me the victory in the commentator's point standings as well. So appreciate that as well, and we look forward to seeing you later on in the week as well as next week as we head to our next race for the Ryko Performance Monday Night Top Split. Thank you, guys. That is Quentin Warman, your race winner here tonight, and... See if we can get Garrett Mays possibly up here. We'll give him a second. He was supposed to join us for the first split. There he is. As we are joined. Well, he, he was here. He was in the room, but then he ran out. Give him a second. Make sure he's all good and clear. There he is. Let's try again. Garrett Maines up in the booth. You got a copy? Try one more time. Garrett, you got a copy? Yes, sir. There we go. A couple of times we were pulling in. You kept just popping out. We were wondering what was going on. Did we say something? Did we smell funny? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not real sure what it is either, but I am calling in from the phone now because every time I join Discord, it kicks me out. I don't know what the deal is, but... Yep. Well, either way, you got a good finish here tonight. Two second place finishes. I mean, talk to us first about the A Open race, racing with Joseph to the finish line. I mean, that was an absolute brawl. Joseph uh, made me work for it, and I mean, he earned that win. I uh, was a little frustrated with the way that unfolded. I felt like, you know, that was our race to lose there. And, you know, I had some wheel damage, and I was doing what I could with it. But, I mean, Joseph, he did everything right there to, to bring it home. and in first so i mean i'll take second to him on that kind of performance like he you know he did everything there there was no you know i didn't feel like there was anything else i could have done to uh get any further forward i mean if i had another lap maybe but i was trying so hard i got you know, zero two, but that was i mean a photo finish of martinsville it was a great battle i enjoyed you know the race we got some some laps in there from time to time so couldn't ask for much more there at the end but I feel like it just gave away this uh, Xfinity race. Uh, Quentin kept me honest the whole time. Just uh, didn't expect it to get loose. Got loose one time on me, and that was all I needed. I should have been moving the bias forward more than likely, but it, just, it caught me off guard the one time it did get loose, and I didn't even have time to adjust for it. So he was there to pounce, and that's all, all he needed. Well, before we let you go, I mean, will we see you Friday night for the top split event here uh, at Martinsville? And, you know, this is one of your home tracks, of course, here located in Virginia area. Well, you know, shout out to Paul for letting me use his rig here. I'm actually, uh, I just did a 12-hour drive today from Richmond to Orlando. So, oh. um, <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been driving, I guess this makes about 14 or 15 hours now, but, um, yeah, I, we'll see you on Friday. It's kind of up in the air. I've been, I'm doing some traveling this week, so I may or may not be able to do that one. I thought I was going to miss Martinsville week completely, and that'd be a bummer. I like this track, but uh, if I'm if I'm home on Friday, I will definitely try to make that. Well, we wish you your best of luck and safe travels home. And that, of course, is Gary Maines coming home in second place here for the Monday night top split presented by Ryko Performance B Open Race. As we come to a close here tonight, Austin, uh, put a tally up to my name for the uh, winner's championship standings for the commentators. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. At what, three, I think, right? Yeah, I think you're uh, four or five now. <laughs> oh, how about that? Well, for that, we have to come to a close for the entire Grid Vision team here tonight. We can't thank Nick Stein for joining us in the first half. And, of course, our amazing producer, Mr. Austin Derbyshire. And I'm Taylor Burris. And, of course, the amazing people at Ryko. Make sure to go visit them at rykoperformance.gg for some of the top setups and premier setups for NIS and short tracks and road racing and all forms of setups. 
so go visit them, and we will see you tomorrow night for our doubleheader at Sebring and back here at Martinsville for the Champions Power Equipment Truck Series and for the season finale of the Stars Championship Esports Series. Good night, everyone.